Yeah, I will, I will try to, to make it rich. So basically, I will just start with the kind of motivation you need to start with. You need integration testing, but it's not really popular, more like open form coders, at least to my knowledge. So I will start with kind of few points on the importance of testing your code in like a unit testing fashion. Uh, and then to give you like a general idea or uh, kind of workflow to achieve uh, effective tests. So obviously you don't waste your time kind of writing tests instead of writing your application libraries. Uh, again, and I, I will also like go through some issues regarding uh, integration tests in specific because uh, about like the code and cases. Uh, the next part will mostly focus on like unit unit testing with my own small toolkit, uh, where I explain how to actually write testable open form code let's say. Uh, and I will obviously mention how I hope this can be in your enemy while testing. Uh, uh, I will also just go through a quick demonstration about uh, how to use this kind of small utility I call from UT to kind of automate and streamline your testing workflow. Right? Right, uh, after, right after that, we just switch to uh, what I call integration testing. So now with unit testing, you kind of uh, test your code in an isolated environment. Uh, with integration testing, testing, basically, you will see how it all works together. Uh, I will give you like my own thoughts on like, how many studies and how you can leverage them, actually, to verify your CFD solvers. Uh, and then we'll introduce you to like some neat feature of some optimization, like, optimization algorithms called relative feature importance. Uh, which will actually help you uh, kind of do design, uh, code design of these series uh, while you are developing your uh, libraries. I will finalize if we have time with uh, some small kind of issues. Uh, the first thing I will uh, kind of uh, give you a comparison between the way I do parameter uh, studies. Uh, and for example, OS test, which is based on Python and more kind of uh, popular among users. Uh, the next thing uh, is if you want to actually just test your open form cases, not the code. So if you just want to see if your cases are okay, uh, there is no a quick way to do it without having an actual open form environment there. Uh, and I kind of will really give you an overview, a quick one on just the quality of light thing that you can do actual unit tests on your text or IDP. So I will just start with the, the very first thing that I have uh, is to explain you why you, sh you should do uh, unit tests or you should keep them at least for one time. The first point is to actually prevent new technology uh, from like introducing bugs. And with with unit tests, you actually can uh, because you can run them, run them on like comments and query it. Uh, you can ease your code reviewing tasks, especially if you are in uh, like a big developers group. Uh, the second thing is. Uh, while you further develop your libraries, you always kind of want them to be backward compatible and you need this assured that state. Because if you make something, if you break something in an earlier version, you need this will actually immediately notify because that's will fail and you will have to fix it. The, the second thing is that you need this actually test your unit self code in a very isolated environment. So it's a, a big advantage that it gives you actual documentation in a coded manner. Now you see all the differences and if you see this, 
shortly. You will see all that you need to make your code work. So at least the intended way. Yeah. Uh, and of course, lastly, which is very important, but you can do benchmarks as you need this, and you can follow how uh, your performance uh, evolution looks uh, over time. Okay. So when you when you automate this, I think I did work through. It becomes just painfully. You will your uh, tests either passing or failing immediately, and you just know why. Like naturally, when like, when really sharps is when you need to port something from fork to fork. Okay, because then you actually know kind of the end design, so you know how it really look. So you can write actually tests to get to that state and say that state that's working. Also, we will, we will uh, explain this in the quick demonstration. So, now the question is, do you test everything and how you actually write tests that can be effective? So the very first thing is, when you actually write your production code, it needs to be, let's say, following a testable mindset. Yeah, and I will explain a little bit about these points. The second thing that I recommend at least is you always want to only test your public interface. So there's no point in testing private things. Uh, uh, they will, uh, at the end of the work, uh, they will pass by the public interface company. So just test the point as the public interface. If you really want something to be tested, then let's make it the public. That's all. Uh, and this will tell you fine. It's fucking well. Okay. And, and then if you kind of depend on a lot of libraries, you know, you're doing a lot of couple uh, uh, software pieces, you're putting on a lot of things, it might be a good idea to just put up some tests for your external libraries just to guard against breaking changes, at least in the function you're using. Like on the long run, it, I'm sure it, it will help you because this has happened a lot, a lot more, a lot more often than you think. Uh, again, it just very simple. If you need to test some function, just make it public. Don't want to do it in Just make it public and test it. Although in C plus still can access private like functions and members, and it's like standard compliant code. <laughs> I no longer see point in private things. You know, just either we can make them protected and don't test the test them, or just go public and just uh, uh, I know this may seem a little bit complicated now, but we will, we will see in a little bit of how uh, this all uh, uh, falls nicely together. Again, then now you are testing units of your code, and you don't really have an idea how they interact together in a CFD software setup, which you really need to assess. Right? So that's why uh, we have also integration testing. Integration testing uh, basically is that you have your solver or kind of a solver that runs on an open case, and you have like metrics to, to dissect whether your, uh, your code has improved or not. Or not. Uh, so, yeah, exactly that's what I was saying. Just prepare for the office. And the most important thing is to automatize the process so there is no beauty in the loop there. Uh, basically, a uh, Git workflows. Yeah, so I will basically start this section on uh, actual hands on like demonstration without actual hands on. And then we, we can go to the hands on thing. Why, why are you writing your code if you really want to be this I recommend just following those two simple simple instructions. First, always pass the mesh into the constructor. Well, not the mesh, we don't really care about the mesh, we really care about the object reversal. So, however, uh, usually the mesh is the highest point in open form code after the client object. So, 
pass something that has access to the mesh or to the database directly because this what this does is shrinks down your dependency from your class in the first thing code. You don't really need to do a lot, you just pass a mesh. Uh, and the mesh is almost always mandatory. Right? Give me a second. The second thing is with your mesh, just pass a dictionary. So you can configure your class from outside code because then you have two ways of configuring your class one for the safety software from like I already like from input output to the disk, and one just from memory because they hate like a bunch of uh, disks in your test. Uh, there was a question. Yeah, you can turn on a little bit onto this. You don't really want to do it. Yes, so I also, I'm not really a fan of walking anyway, but it, it, it's okay. But I usually do in general, like a couple of cases with different mesh types uh, that I test on. Okay. I'm just hopeful of the best but that, that actually works, but I don't know if you can tell the time for this, how that works. Uh, so there is just one other thing I need really to mention here is please don't have virtual functions with default like implementation. Just don't do that. If you, if you want default like virtual functions, make them abstract, like make them equal to zero, then you can override. Right? Because if, if, if you would believe, uh, how does an info statement sector uh, actually encounter this? Because someone tried to overhaul things, stop overhauling it, virtualize everything, and then you end up with your info saying that the error is right here at an info statement, and it's not. Because it's some other function. Is, well, well, how does three or four hours I figured that out? <laughs> It would be better if you just do it the, the easier way. So here's like an example, an example how you would keep a business for image and pass them back object to the customer. Well, this has an advantage of significantly shrinking down your dependency because now you just have an image image. Which is probably available to you anyway at any point of the time, right? The one disadvantage of this is it complicates MPI communication a little bit because now you can put your, your class into like random access list in you know, form because they require an empty constructor, then you can have an empty constructor you have to the other ones. So now you are bound to use. Uh, like linked lists for uh, MPI communities, which is a little bit more complicated than that. But uh, you know, you, you, you lose some kind of trivialty with uh, random cases. Uh, Astrid, how many classes do you really need to pass through the MPI interface? Not so much. So, do this for most of your features. Just say that. Huh? Right. So this reference is on one process, right? So it's referring to the mesh of one process, right? And you need to initialize that uh, kind of reference at a special time. It's not a point of the point where you can initialize the low point and you can go about your work and then you just assign the name, right? That's good. And then so now you need to send one object from one person to another. How do you do this? Right. Because you need the next art construction. I don't know if I'll explain. What is the problem? Can you send one of the No, but, but on the other process, you need, you need to request all uh, to to you like, refer to the other mesh, not your mesh. You can send the mesh. It's like a difference you can't really send, but it, is, it has no need because it's uh, just a by application in memory of the of the sending. Uh, 
but you really want the receiving process. It, it, it's not like uh, fundamental like water, but it's it's just the way uh, uh, kind of random lists are compacted in the different community. Like compact and you can have that. with make this there are ways to become more. I would say that at the current which you which are like plug on yourself, the top most likely you have it. We can talk about maybe uh, the problem for me Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. But like you said, how many objects you write don't go to any time? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 If you don't like modeling or this model and stuff like that, that will never go to the like it's more like a lot of objects and then I got to say exactly if, if you kind of want to uh, like to be like in a container here you can think about this quality. So the next step is the dictionary thing, which is very similar also. So you can do it with this. You have, uh, by the way, you have, it's better to have like a full dictionary copy that inside your class. So what you can do is just pass the dictionary because now in the testable code, or in the testing code, you just part of an actual dictionary with your CFD solver, you can pass a file also, which has like a dictionary inside. The main advantage of file dictionaries are uh, runtime on modifiability. You can modify them basically as runtime. Now you have to manage your file runtime objects yourself. That's the only, I would say, like no button. But the is also very Yeah, exactly. So they have modified the the That's the lighting process. Yeah, but the dictionary is like the naked dictionaries don't have that in your list. Yeah, but you, you I only only use uh, at the solver. Ah, I see your phone. Yeah, I know I see your phone. So it's not really uh, a drawback. It's like the I will dictionary only use in your protection code, which has right? Yeah, but also that's the good thing. So active Yeah, exactly. And in in testing code, don't, don't care about online. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yes. I, I guess that's not why a real drawback because it could be a drawback and try to fall the next. <laughs> As you can see. So now, without issue with IO dictionary and the dictionary thing, we come to the final issue. So, one of the most basic principles of unit testing is now back on. The less back on you can do, the better. Now we're forced to actually need in a case because when you dissociate your file object, you already like need some kind of different some kind of right? So you're already already dependent on that already. So what you can do is just minimize it, minimize that from that point of view. And what I really advise against is to create like all dictionaries like inside your past constant which those makes uh, classes not so considerable from the outside. And then you, you, you basically, you, you will have to do some kind of getting around things to do with this thing. I'll even show you also uh, how this works. Uh, so, so here's how uh, I went to the database. So what you can do is to like build this string, which kind of looks like a dictionary. Pass through the item dictionary and write immediately before constructing an object in testing code. You can it, take it in, your, in consideration that you are running like 100 
irritants. And you have no control over what's on the disk now. Yeah, so you can trust it. So just like it before and do your uh, construction. We need to see examples. Oh, I say for God. Yes, they can. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> so basically, my toolkit is based around these ideas. So what you have to do, you have like your library. You only need to write some test compilation units, and you provide your own make files. I do this to be just cross or all folks compatible. So you need to make uh, your make files, you need to provide them. So what I do is just compile everything into like test drive and then run it on a couple of uh, open applications. Actually, you can provide them. The utility by default has a small cavity case which works with everything. So uh, let me actually show you something about this utility, if I can write the... Yeah, so where's my mouse? Uh, as you can see, of course, the unit testing toolkit is also unit testing. And it works with the main uh, kind of box. So, so in principle, what you can actually do just right, right now is you uh, can go to the repository and just start your code space and, uh, and it will be uh, the, Actually, I need to sit down now because it's time for the hands-on thing. Uh, so let's, uh, I, will, I will start with basically talking uh, how to just run a simple, Test a very quick one. Uh, so I probably need to clone uh, again the link. I hope I hope the link is on the yeah. That's the link. If you if you really want to clone it right now, uh, otherwise take a screenshot and do it later. So yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, we need an open form thing to be active. And then you just run your tests. Yeah. So what, it, what, what this does is compiles your, uh, compiles the catch tool for you. So that's the basis of the unit tests. Uh, and then just compiles your tests and, and uh, run them. Run them in two modes, one in serial and one in parallel. By default, it's four processes. Yeah. Uh, so when you run a parallel, you run it in parallel? Not really, it looks like it's the test driver. There is like your main function, so it takes care of the so it actually does it like native linear open form. So if your if your fork, like if you know the set the loop case and create one, it does it like that. So there is no actually any question in the question. Uh -huh. And the issue is when I'm testing my test in parallel. Okay. I get of course for each core a catch to report. Yeah, you see, yeah, that's and you try to work in your head. Yeah, there is no way wrong about that. Oh, yeah, not, not, yeah no, not really. So, um, if, if you actually need it, I thought of this also. That is, you can even read more than this and just do the math or something. But still, it's, in my experience, it's still a better way to do Because in my code, mostly I have hanging from a lot. So, if you really need to know which part is making problems in that uh, exact setup. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, about it. That's what you need. The dependencies, the, the dependencies are small. You just need uh, like a, a CMake thing, uh, like a recent CMake. That's all you need on a recent 
system. So a test case, let's see how a simple test case looks. So you have, let me annotate stuff so it can speak freely. So you have a test name, which is like a real readable string for you. Uh, and then we kind of abuse the facts. So you can pick which kind of tags, uh, uh, tags uh, you need for other cases. So it's, uh, I, would, I would say this belongs in serial and power on the cabinet. So just a small trick to organize them. Uh, then again, to be cause uh, of different works, you don't need some kind of, uh, let's say, global type object which you fetch it in back. Uh, and then you can just that way while uh, statement is back to uh, test, which pay in the base or uh, passes. And I recommend just keeping it, it back kind of test there, just to be sure uh, that you don't uh, increment the power index, because now you can change power index. It's not recommended to change time because it's a global value. So yeah. There are shortcomings, but I guess I will learn more when I find passion. So when it fails, actually gives you why it is and why. The things like we message things are for the, the capture statement, which capture uh, important values like this. Uh, again, uh, just to note, cast is very simple to get started with. The role is not efficient. I think I won't do it like an hour, so it's not a lot. Uh, uh, and you obviously have a little bit of options here to how to run the test because we don't really Sometimes you don't want parallel tests, sometimes you don't want serial tests. Uh, and you can test uh, kind of third file, so just test one file, which should be very fast. Uh, and you can also get HTML, uh, HTML reports, something like this, which uh, will actually basically everything you need from the old version to the card version. Uh, uh, this is the basically, well, although I never look at this, to be honest, I just use uh, GitHub for close, uh, uh, workflows to uh, do my bidding. Uh, yeah, so our task for today we just to kind of write a small test for this class, which, as you can guess, is a very testable class in my opinion. You know, has a mesh and additionally on the concept. So when you see this, you immediately see uh, that it is uh, a testable thing. So what we also have, and of course, these are the uh, that the subject, uh, subject, subject class is a Boolean for uh, if the velocity field is there uh, and just a random setting to test test units. So I will actually just clone the code really quick. Uh, again, need something else. Where, where is that clone thing? Okay, so I can I can work with you about like this code. So what you have is your uh, SRC here is supposed to be your production library. You know, just one class uh, with that code we have here. So let's take a look at the headers. Basically the exact same uh, header I just showed you uh, with the regular kind of uh, members and the two members we need to to test. Okay, so what I can do actually is just very quickly just uh, compile, and then uh, I hope this will compile correctly. Okay, it does. So what what you have is also the tests. These are your tests, which is basically just one file to set up your test, and it's. 
kind of just one test case here that may disable all of those things, right? Uh, so yeah, so this is basically a test on the cavity case, which supposedly runs on serial and parallel. What? Uh, yeah, what you have here is find a class, find a class that you can or class that you Yeah, fixed it. Yeah, the one you have to go to the internet from the class that you want to test. Yeah, I mean, I just accept the final thing. I don't know. It's not normal. You know, when this thing is just, you know, really need to get very, very fast, you can spend 50% of the time on a test. I think new classes, right? So you really need it to be like very fast. So just make it public. This is first. So if the code was under your control, and then it's already private and you have nothing to do with it, I just do some hack and just accept that line. Yeah. All the pictures are, let's say, a good way to build up this. Again, when we when you see cash and you should just say very not pictures. But we probably because I don't really know the popular. Okay, so so and, and watch this and you will see how documentation oriented this is. So uh, here we are the indices for the class. You have you need like a time object, you need a mesh object. You see that? Apply well 15 up. And then you need a dictionary and your, your tests are. You can do this in section, there are a lot of different ways. You can do this in cash too. There is no time to display them all, but this time. So this is a object you have to put in the cell there. Yeah. That's the big problem. Yeah, absolutely. But in my case, we are working on AMR and global policy. I mean, I didn't do this there. Right? So, did you get so much like a bigger version of this? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If you, if you, uh, if you are like calling the independent problem, right? you can use that. Uh, there is no like hard thing to use the match. It's just for me that I usually work with the match, but fast. So, I really need to get one match. It's a big part of my customer workflow. But yeah, you're right. Completely, I agree. You can just go. I really need to mesh it just, just like a user data, which is the one set, right? So what do you think these tests do? So, okay, so the first require, so right there, it just uh, kind of tests if you build this on or not, which is that I know that it's not on because my test cases, like open oh, test cases don't have feeds. I, I don't read from any uh, disks. So the only thing I need is the mesh, which, which is I'm kind of forced to. And then the second thing just kind of uh, tests that setting, whether uh, it's set correctly to them or not, because you know you have set it to them and then you see if it's really set to them or not. Again, these are trivial test cases. You wouldn't do these tests in real life. But they are like a good place to start. So what I can actually do without do, uh, doing a lot of things is I just remove the example tests from uh, my yep, and maybe just link them. So let's go with uh, uh, where is the tests and my tests, and you link it to. Uh, uh, watch me flip this over, right? Oh, I did it first time, so that works. Now, if you run it uh, and and it just like you sim link your tests into the test part of the problem, because it's out of source, and you see that. So to make a little the things a little bit. More obvious, let's just run the serial version. So you actually see the failing part. 
which is both test cases fail because okay the velocity is not wrong because it's false right and uh you have this is not equal but equal to that right so yeah let, let's let's quickly try to fix that to be on the kind of a safe side i will both work on the the tests so they make more sense and i will also work on the class obviously so let's let's quickly run through and check uh whether there is something wrong about this test because this also is an issue i want to emphasize on because now you're testing code by writing other code which you really need to debug also so it's not so <laughs> so fun to do that's why i say always just keep your things short so okay we 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 write we create them our object and we we just uh, require to uh, the velocity to be found, which is fine, I guess. Let's let's see. Uh, this is also like fine. Oh, by the way, so we, when when you lose sections, the whole thing starts over. So it's like you know the code starts from the very top, from the very top right here, starts again for each like section. Okay, so they are independent, so to speak. And so anything you do inside that section macro here uh, has has absolutely no effect on other sections. That's why it's really just for your convenience that you don't have to write all that thing again, right? So again, let me let me let's look at uh, the actual uh, code we want to test, which is this class. Uh, and just maybe we we are interested in the implementation. Uh, okay, so what we did here is just to initialize basically the velocity is found, which does supposedly the correct thing. It just looks inside the mesh database to find the volume vector field named U. So that should be yes, right? Okay, so we'll look at that later, but then I want the settings to actually get rid. No, not that, but uh, we can edit it while the, uh, let's say like this. Uh, what was this? I don't even care, so let's say it like this. Uh, no, it was an in, was it? It was compared to 10. So let's say it like this. Okay, so we are if you if you remember how the let me actually bring back the the test. So if you remember how our test was structured here, structured here, you create the object and then you set the dictionary. Uh, and the dictionary is not really read anywhere in the code, so now it's read. Uh, now we actually need to like set the dictionary first, obviously, and then read because that's when your constructor takes effect. Uh, again, and the velocity field is not there because we, we have seen like that false, right? With the velocity is far. So let me create something very quick here if I can. Uh, okay, I don't think Copilot is uh, is on, so I have to do it on my own. Uh, let's say like this. I don't think I remember everything here. Uh, something like this. Come on. And again, I'm doing this live like on purpose so you can actually, uh, I think it's on time, let's say, by name. Uh, I should have set my, my stuff back by our object. I think we need a mesh here. 
those tokens and then let's go no read and no write. So this is basically the, the preferable constructor of IO objects I work with. You just no read, no write. You know, and you can read on things again. Let's see how if this compiles first, and then we can we can go through. I think we are uh, we're fine at this point. So did we change anything in the class? Yes, we did. So uh, I need to compile that again. I probably did this. Or ah, cool. Okay, so this worked. And now we are on the cases. I, I, I need to fix the compilation hours. Just give me a second, I know. There was no dimension vector, really? I don't know how to fix that. Uh, well, yep. So let me do something just to give to keep my my sanity. Does anyone know where to get dimension? Yeah. I'm, I'm not I'm not following. Um, Ah, oh, I see. Yeah. Where? Where is spinning though? Oh yeah. No, it should, should be included by default, right? And that should be my first my instinct, but yeah, no. Okay. Okay, it was it, it was not working. Now it's working on on both Serial and Palm. So as you can see, now that if you if you open your your uh, test, you see like a predefined scheme of the things you need to run with this class. Right? You don't really need documentation. Just read this. And that's the intended work. Right, so let's get back to the presentation just to show you how your code would look in my production setups and your testing setups. We we had something like this that when you want to use the class in a solver, you just convert it to that, and you have all the benefits of uh, IO systems which you need in production, but not really in this. Uh, a little bit more is when you kind of want to test templates. There are a lot of ways to go about this, but you can actually test just specific types here with that template test case instead of just a test case. Uh, this only works when you have only one kind of template targeting, which is called this same test type in here by default. There are some other arguments which support like. Signature one factorization of your species, and you can pass two terms of uh, arbitrary and the time signal line. And that required also extends to something else, a name or requirement that, which you can use predicates. It's not there, so it's, it, it, you don't have to be like super compact, so you don't have to. For example, I require that every single element of uh, a bit more conscious can do the required part to not be perfect. Of course, this is more performance oriented. Again, if you ever are in the situation where you really, really need to test, 
he can kind of just take a look at my kind of father I was doing. It was like a duplicated version of the same inquiry, uh, which has had a lot of time in the right? And no worries, it's just one of the only human beings that can relate to just templates and friend functions. Please. Okay. So uh, let me know all of that in the YouTube if you really want to uh, go into it. So basically, what I do is just fabricate new libraries and then not there. For example, think home center problem, leave this way. So yeah, just create an empty one and think again. So we already have symbols from the whole library. Uh, the second thing is uh, you really want your cases to work on all the open form versions you test. Because this is not a hard dependency. If your test doesn't work, automatically your all of your unit tests are not good. So your case is to work first, and then you go see it with the unit tests. But the the proposed test driver here, I will not really show you that, but what it does it actually takes um, two sets of options, touch options, and options. And if it does everything the way you will expect a solver to do this, initialize and the eye, finalize and the eye, if I don't know how this So, yeah, one last thing about the test is you already need to wait for my own stuff. You know, you don't just put some unit test and the first one gets. Like start and you run on GitHub servers for six hours just because of your first unit test is stuck, right? So the way to do this is easy insert, you know, just to pause it stuff. You can just grab this instance and uh, do something like this, which you require, uh, which is like your required pseudo environment. Uh, so when, when the test is Perhaps you have more than terminated, you just get the failing stages very fast. But of course, like, you know, like timeout threshold. But the problem with this is when you start the power. Because then there is no way to gracefully get out of the situation where the code has a set of so cannot really do much there, at least I can do And so so if you have if you have some, for example, if you have something like that, why are you not part? So you won't have clean HTML reports because you just will not continue this tree. Uh okay, so you mean you will have you will have that exact line that says this page because it was a politic line. Okay. It is very important, just well, it's more important in parallel settings because we probably have to guard against the uh, in parallel settings more what you can do. Okay, so I think we don't have much time now, right? Yeah, I, I will try to do my best, but not now you, you test your unit tests, your unit functions, everything is kind of good in going with it. And you actually need to see the bigger picture of how your CFD solver performs. And actually, actually now I have, to like, I have a very small also to it. It's kind of based on optimization stuff, more than very common variation. You can, but you can only use that just to do your parameter rights and so forth. So, what take works is two things a yard where you put your Parameter definition and your objectives, which can be like generic functions when you need to your object types. As long as as like a scalar comes up and so on, it's acceptable. You can do this on learning, you can do this locally, you can do it wherever you want. Right. And you also need an on-form case working on this one. That's like one of the first things. So uh, again, the, you can see I forgot. Yeah, the most important things are the parameter definition, what parameter that you are looking for, uh, and how to substitute them. I mean, if I call one hour, 
but it's a little bit more streamlined. Uh, and then you just define maybe object or objective functions, which are basically part but they don't scale at all the graph. Uh, yeah, and then uh, all you have to do is just uh, let's actually see. Oh. Let's let's see uh, like a small example, just an example. It's bigger than now, but still an example. So what you can is just you can do is specify your template, uh, like the first case is part one, and you uh, say I have two parameters in this case. One is density ratio, and the other is viscosity, and then one of the range of this and that. And and then we get the text. We say there's space. Comes back this way. Again, the objectives here are very trivial. This is just an help command. Uh, getting the execution file from the log and simple things. So, as you can see, it's very simple. The second one is little bit can be more complicated using our view to fetch some five of hours. You can also like rely on continuity on what you don't want to uh, And you specify which way or where to substitute your parameters in your case. So I want to leave both of, both of these go to the transport uh, properties. And there are some, let's say, better way that you said, because you, in this case, we can, for example, run 32, 32 cases. Six me at once, so you can run power less at once. And this works also in the optimization, like side ways, which is, I think, good. Uh, I actually planned some hands on here, but I would just refer to, to the report for you from this point to go on a little bit later. Say. So, yeah, so let's go to what's good and what's not so good about this particular uh, framework. So I will just start with, with the other side. Uh, it's going to do between the partners. Uh, this is not being provided by the software partners, so it's not any my fault. Right? And the second thing is uh, a little bit my fault, but you don't really have. Not much fight about your values, just randomize them. So if you if you say like a range from one, a zero to one, you will get one randomized value to buy. But you later on often to do to do like a choice, which is a little bit more uh, And then the quite new dependency of partners packages that we need to follow that run from. Right. So what can you use this for? It just be answered kind of two simple questions. Uh, you can say, How are we doing with the algorithm? What's the graph? You have a graph in the graph is a part of my If you can compute some metric that gives you some insight on, on how close you are to your theory, you can do it. Uh, of course, you can replace the, your theoretical results. With your previous results from previous or previous one coming in. So you can do things from previous uh, All right, so the rest I already talked about. Uh, well, the one thing you don't really have to do here is you code in. You don't have to code it in, just the configuration file you put in there, you run the script, you get the results. Uh, but at least that's what they hope for. All right, so this is the kind of the example I prepared, which, uh, you know, it's daily. Uh, and we just maybe uh, parameterize the viscosity, the inevitability, the turbulence sequence, if you want, the real linear source, and you maybe compare your operator viscosity. And the goal of today is how you is to study how your code reacts to these changes. Right, like in a systematic automated way. Uh, so I will, I will just go straight into the results here. Uh, you can use this. There is, there is the, uh, the repository. I have like a doc file in there. I have the examples. It's very easy to restart. 
So the, the thing I really like this framework or argument uh, uh, thing I like to talk here is actually their ability to give you some uncertainty and measurements uh, on your uh, your clients, let's say. So in this particular example, and I want through this person, so when I was working on KFR and work on some products, I had this idea of uh, you know how to show you do this refined interval, but they want to fix from you. So it's the number of steps between each refinement. So I was like, yeah, let's optimize that. So let's put an automated model in there. And the real the results of this particular reason was very like impressive because then I I about crafted let's say crafted the uh, uh, prototype. Let's yeah. see how to impact on this genius. And as you can see here on the right, uh, not really impact. So the conclusion was very simply: if you just do an educated guess. On the refinement interval. Anyway, you can just bring a bit it away. It has no real impact on either performance or your uh, accuracy. So, you know, you would say if I refine too often, I would jeopardize that if you thought. But say no, not really. And the I think the interval was quite large, like uh, 500, more than uh, 50 to 400, so that's some range there. But still, the relative importance here of the refined model, which is like automatically now or fixed, is not as much as, for example, just changing your divergence scheme. You know? So if you compare your the uh, models uh, in, in such a question, uh, you can actually get like proof at least that either you need to go on with this development or you just, uh, you know, ditch it very frequently. Yeah, so this slide I feel uh, just is the same as I was saying. Uh, do we have time now? No, we don't. Okay, so I will really do this like in, ten, in two minutes because it's kind of important. These are, let's say, my free time of uh, projects and kind of a uh, little bit proud of, about that. So let's let's just skip the Python stuff. Python is very similar to my kit. I was just kind of intending to uh, compare. It's not very easy to question. If you are looking for in Python or a lot of it's kind of a little bit better in that area. So one of the things I did is just find a small parser that you don't really need to perform, uh, how to say, environment to parse uh, the cases involved. So you can do this on like web browsers. And I think there are like those uh, CFD in the cloud companies that are already starting to get this. Because if you like upload the file of the case, then it's to be in some way to check it. It's a user interface, you need to check it. So you can you can do this very reliably now. So what I what I what I'm using it is just for my typical just to get nice highlight instead of using like C uh, highlighting things. The second thing is the difference between your cases. So if you want like to know what has changed before this one and that, uh, well there are, there are regular kind of uh, Tools, which is kind of built there or gate there or something like that. Uh, but then not really understanding the grammar form, right? So, so take this phases keyword here, for example. Like in open form way, there's nothing happen. Okay, yeah, it's changed, but we just add the comment. But it will say a lot of things have changed, right? So the because of that power zero. And because it understands the one what's really happening in this cell to add the thing. Thank you. Right? So these are kind of a quality of life needs for the Amplifon community. Yeah? If you ever like, need to do this, uh, there are all these 
just check the repositories uh, again. And that, uh, I think I mentioned earlier that you can uh, test your client. Uh, you can do in your phone, we will say that this one was taken. This is from from you if you touch. Yeah. We don't have this type of online course of process, I know. So I just want to learn this. Also, that it's feasible as long as your tech are small. Some the HPC and wait that you are about to do IPQ. Uh, but yeah, this. Can I turn into like a decent person, uh, in my opinion? Not really using this yet, uh, but I will try this. I think I'm at the end. I hope I didn't bore so much. I only see two talk. But these are a couple of, let's say, limited talks. Uh, just one last note. Uh, if, if you are interested in that organization, why? Okay. Uh, there is the uh, machine learning hackathon. It will be like the 24th in this one. Yeah, I guess you are invited to attend because I will probably spend the, the three days to just improve on that. It's okay. Yeah. But uh, there is. Uh, just getting uh, in contact with the uh, SIG of the data model here. And they are, I'm uh, sorry, thank you. I'm preparing the uh, code that I will be participating in the week. So, make sure I'm happy to see you there. I guess, thank you for your attendance. <laughs> yeah.